Hey everyone, Chris Matson here. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use reference images when creating complex CAD geometry. Let's do it. All right, so we might have a photograph or we might have a sketch. We wanna import that into the CAD system and use it to help create the geometry that we envisioned when we were sketching or to copy a product that you have a photograph of. I am going to uh, look for a hairdryer, Harry Josh hairdryer. Let me get um, some screenshots of this. Here's the side view. This one is the real important image that we have. I'm gonna use this to create a master model of the basic shape. So what that means is that I'm going to uh, use this to get you know this full shape that goes around like this, comes down all the way to here, uh, you know, blah, 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 blah. Actually, I might not do this front piece, which is a sort of diffuser or a nozzle of some sort. Maybe I'll maybe I'll do it in the master model because I have I have the image, so maybe I'll do it. I also am really interested in this line that goes right down this middle. This is going to be the parting line. So one part is going to be this thing in the front, and one part is going to be this part in the back. That line is going to help me a lot with that. So that's what I'm going to get out of this image. Okay, and then here is the picture I wish we had for the brand new version of the product. Uh, we can tell this is not the new version of the product because there is no sort of finger cut out in here. The buttons are old and different. We see that it has the old grill in the back and uh, what else? The strain relief area is different. Um, all right, the next thing that we have to do is we have to get a sense for what is the size of this product. So when we look back at this one, which is the one we care about the most, we need one dimension off of this. If we get one dimension off of this, we can scale this image in the CAD system to be the right size. We have to go back to the internet here. Josh, this was called Harry Josh maybe? Harry Josh Pro Tools Dimension. Okay, 10 inches high. That might have to do with the cord as well, but seven inches long. Okay, that's the one we're gonna go for, is seven inches long. That's gonna be our key, our key dimension that we're gonna have help us for now. We can always use the design table to scale everything later if we find out the actual value. Okay, getting rid of this. What we need to do now is we need to go into the CAD system, and into the CAD system, our very first feature that we need to put in here is a reference line, and that reference line needs to be seven inches. So we're gonna put that on the front plane, because the front plane is the plane where we put the most obvious view of the product, and that most obvious view of the hairdryer is the side view. So we're gonna put that here on the front plane. This is going to become sketch one, and sketch one is in there. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to add in the product image that we care about. So we're going to begin by creating a new sketch <clears throat> on the front plane. Okay, we're gonna to go to tools and we're gonna to go to sketch tools. And then we're going to go into uh, sketch image, sketch picture, right down here at the bottom. This is the one we want. Okay, then we're going to pick our picture that we want, and the image that we want is this image, this ref image side. Okay, great. Now our image is in here, and we can see our image is way too big because our seven inch line is way down here. So all we have to do is scale this down to approximately the right size, move this to about where we want to be. That right there is just about right. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna think about the operations that we wanna do to create this thing. But I'm gonna do a revolve for that, uh, for that main uh, piece that's up at the top. So we're gonna start that one. So I'm gonna turn my planes back on here, okay? And I'm gonna create a new sketch on here. This is my sketch three. And in this sketch, I am going to first draw a curve. I'm gonna use a spline. And I'm going to come in here, zoom in nice and close. So I'm just going to come over here, start taking these. Okay, now when we're using splines, it's best if we can do it with the least number of 
uh, spine control points um, because these control points will um, be harder to deal with kind of the more that I have the more I have of them so we can kind of see that this one is gonna give me a little bit of trouble at this point I need to get all the way over to here so I'm going to have to you know do something like this okay so at this point we're gonna stop that uh, my curves looking pretty good through most of this I don't like really what's going on over here Let's see if I can move any of these points, and it turns out I can. Okay, let's see if I can move this one, and I can. And um, I think that we're gonna go just straight lines once we get over to here. So I'm going to pull this back. And frankly, I can come in here, though it doesn't look like I need to. I can come in here and delete these control points. Um, which I don't necessarily see right there right now, but, uh, well, let's try this. Delete, okay, I can just hit the delete button. I can also right click on this and add a con curvature control point, not a curvature control point, a spline point, just like this. I can say where I want that to go, so now I kind of have that one back. I want this thing over here to be pulled down just a little bit and then I want this one to be pulled down just a little bit as well. So this is gonna be the first part of my revolve. I am going to um, now dimension this. By the way, while I'm dimensioning this, I think I'm just gonna say that I am choosing to do uh, surfaces right now because I am going to create the master shape of the outside of this, which you'll see. And then I will use that as a master model to create the different pieces. Though we are still showing as underdefined. And why? Because we forgot one point right here. Okay. We want to dimension that. Okay, now we can see my curve turned from blue to black, meaning I'm fully defined. If I hide this thing, uh, there's my sketch. All right, so now I wanna take that thing and revolve it around an axis. So I've gotta get my axis created, which I'm gonna do in my, um, my uh, reference geometry. I need an axis between this and this. All right, now I'm going to make a surface revolve. And my surface revolve is going to be this line and the axis of revolution is going to be this one. And that is going to be the body of my thing. All right, now let's um, go back to our side view here. Let's turn on our second sketch to see how we did. Okay, and we can see that it, we did pretty well. This is gonna be just fine for what we want, for what we want to do. Let's go for the handle now. Okay, in the handle, let's think about how we wanna do the handle. Um, we don't have a lot of information about what the front view of the handle looks like, um, but it's probably circular or oval in shape, and it kind of goes through this path, so to speak. So what we should do is let's do a loft from a cross section that's down here. Actually, we'll choose a cross section that's way down here, and we will go through a handful of different cross sections. Okay, now let's turn on this sketch and clean some stuff up if we need to. Okay, so that's gonna be excellent. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna loft up around this thing and then later come in and make a cutout for these buttons. So those are the cross sections that I'm trying to build a spline, excuse me, a loft through. We're gonna create a loft. So far, I think we're looking okay. Let's, um, let's accept this for now and see what it looks like. Uh, and then we're gonna go put in the guide curve to help us. 
Okay, now it's very unlikely that the actual hair dryer has this little blip that's out here. So we're gonna have to go fix one of those uh, cross sections. And let's do that now. Okay, let's see if that did it. Oh, so close. Okay, there we go. That's what we want. Now we're gonna go in here and trim this thing. Okay, now we're gonna think about this model for a few minutes. Just gonna ponder on it. Ponder on what we're seeing. Uh, where are we at the moment? We have um, we have pretty much the full uh, system that we're going to going to have. Um, we have matched the profile of the product in lots of ways. I think what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to do a few more things where I'm going to use master modeling uh, to help create uh, some separate parts and show you what you would do with this sort of, uh, you know, this sort of product, this sort of model once you have it. So there's a couple of things I gotta do to make all that happen. Uh, number one is I wanna come back here and turn this back on, turn these on. And there's another curve I need to go get. And that curve is the parting line for the plastics and then another curve for the strain relief. So I'm gonna hide a lot of these things that I currently have on here. Okay, now let's look at this directly onto its side. This is the parting line that's right here, you know, this part that goes right down this, this middle. And then we have the strain relief uh, cuts that we basically need to deal with. Just that somewhere from up here, start down at this part. Somewhere from down here, then straight up. Okay, we'll go and trim that in a few minutes. That's going to be that part of that line. And now I need to make this curve. That's right here. That looks like a nice smooth curve. Let's see if we can do it with a three point curve. I don't know if we can. That did not work. Going back and doing that again. Curve. Don't really want to be tied to that line, so. There we go. I'm gonna go with that. Okay, and then I actually want to get this filleted right in here just a little bit. Can I do that? Sketch fill it from here to here. Let's just take it. Yes, perfect. And then um, this one, we already have that cut plane because it's what we used for the revolve. Okay, and then in a separate sketch, we need to come in here and get some of this cut out. Okay, these curves are gonna be helpful for me as I slice the thing up for master modeling. And in here, I wanna create a new um, extruded surface using this curve. And this is a surface that's now gonna exist in my master model. It's what defines the left and right side. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna be done making that piece. I actually want to do another extruded surface. And I want that extruded surface to go through this. And I want it to go both directions. And I'm going to accept that. Okay. Great. 
So this is now my master model, has these slices in it. Let's come over now to our assembly. Those are my buttons, buttonholes. And let's look at the unassembled version. Okay, so that is the end of this video. What did we do in this video? We showed how to take a reference image, such as this image that's right in here. Okay, let's, let's, does this thing shrink? Okay, perfect. Shrink this down. We showed how to take a reference image, such as this image from the internet that shows the Harry Josh ultralight hairdryer. And uh, we used it in the CAD system to be able to get the geometries that would represent that closely. So let's actually see if I can pull that other picture back up. Was that in here? Here we go. All right. So here are the two products. Uh, you can see that they're quite similar. In fact, they we know they're similar because we used the image to create the CAD model. Uh, of course, we had to make some approximations here and there. Uh, primarily because we didn't have the hairdryer with us, so we couldn't take pictures and that sort of thing. The key thing in doing this was really, um, let me get over to the design tree here, uh, was really this master model. Okay, And this ma master model is where we created the surfaces that allowed us to build all those other parts. And in creating the master model, we didn't have to think about what was the front, what was the back, what was the nozzle, what was the strain relief. All we needed to do was use the sketch image, which is this one that's right in here. And in fact, let me turn this back on for a second, see if I can just change the transparency on this. Is that possible? Um, I guess the answer to that is no. Um, so we'll hide this, hide. And you can see that we have built this right on top of the actual image. I will also hold, hide the handle here. So you can see that, which is the loft. Is this this loft? No, it's the other loft that happened before that, which is this one. Okay, and so we've used the picture to get the geometry that we need. And in the end, we end up with something that's pretty good. It allows us to uh, match the actual thing. And in the end, how long did we spend on this? I'm going to guess that it was about three hours. Um, it's almost four o'clock now. I spent about, I spent about two and a half, I spent about one and a half hours in the last little bit, you know, maybe about two hours. And earlier today, I spent about an hour and a half. Now, part of that was uh, messing up with the first set of lofts that we did. The other half was just learning a couple of things. And of course, I know how to do this. So it takes me less time than it will take you to do it. But nevertheless, this is how it's done. And frankly, um, it's pretty powerful stuff. So I'm glad you stuck around to this point in the video so that you could see how that was done. And I wish you the best as you try some of this stuff yourself. See you in the next video.